morning, believers and non-believers. Good morning, seekers. We are Prairie Unitarian Universalist Church. We are from Parker, Colorado, and we welcome you. I invite you this morning on this first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. I invite you on this Sunday morning, better known as Easter Sunday, I invite and welcome you on this last day of Passover. I invite you who celebrated holy in all the colors of spring this week. I invite you into this house of community, a house of love and house of worship. Come to this house to be welcomed because of, not in spite of your belief. Come to share and to learn. Come to build a house of faith that breaks the models and serves humanity and the world around us. Come, one and all, from me to you. Welcome to Prairie UU. Good morning, Prairie family, friends, and guests. Thank you for joining on this glorious Easter Sunday. My name is Paul Ermish, and it is my privilege to lead us in the opening hymn, hymn number 203, All Creatures of the Earth and Sky. The hymn lyrics are based on words from St. Francis of Assisi. The hymn tune dates back to the 1600s in Germany, uh, a hymn tune uh, which I want to attempt to pronounce in German, meaning, let us rejoice. This modern arrangement done by an English composer, uh, Ralph Vaughan Williams. So please join me as you're willing and able in singing the first three verses of All Creatures of the Earth and Sky. All creatures of the earth and sky, come kindred, lift your voices high. strong white clouds that sail in heaven along alleluia alleluia fair rising morn in praise rejoice high star of evening find a voice alleluia 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 pure and clear make music for all life to hear alleluia alleluia dance flame of fire so strong and bright and bless us with your warmth and light alleluia 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 Welcome to Prairie U. I offer you a virtual hug that comes with all the love and celebration of this community this Sunday morning. We hope that you feel welcomed and a sense of inclusion. We want to acknowledge you who are joining us for the very first time, whether you are from Parker, Colorado, Orange, California, or from Bridge House, ready to work in Boulder or Aurora, or anywhere else in the world, we want you to know that you are welcome with us. Welcome to this first Sunday of April. Today we are kicking off our theme of the month of becoming, asking the question, what does it mean to be a people of becoming? This month we will be exploring what it is to become people of faith. This month we will celebrate spring, Easter, Passover, Ramadan, and more. It is a sacred time of year for us to center on rebirth and becoming anew. Welcome, welcome this month and today to our celebration of becoming. This song was written by J.D. Martin, 
Joe Henry and Doug Johnson in 2019 after the Parkland High School uh, mass shooting. They were inspired by what happened after that event where the young kids from the high school got together and they formed um, a group, uh, an advocate group for uh, gun uh, safety laws in our country. And so uh, they were able to speak out. And this song uh, was inspired by that event. It's called Out of the Shadows. This month we are focusing on becoming, and today we are focusing on rising from the ashes. Please join me in the next few moments of meditation and prayer and reflection as we reflect on what it means to celebrate triumphantly over all that has been set before us uh, in an attempt to hinder our path. Today we celebrate spring. We celebrate the sun and its warmth. We celebrate the turning of the year and the wheel to hear the birds sing, the, see the flowers bloom, and to explore nature around us. We feel the revitalization of nature starting to come up from its cocoons and out of hibernation. We celebrate the warmth of friendships and family. We celebrate the opportunity to come forward as a community. Even if not for now, it's only virtually. 
we celebrate all that is before us. We celebrate science that is giving us hope to once again to be together uh, physically and to rise from the ashes of COVID-19. As a way to be connected with each other in a physical way, we bring with us on Sunday mornings our breathing buddies. I invite each of you to show your breathing buddy um, and to uh, just share with us each other our breathing buddies. This is my breathing buddy, Ralph Waldo Jr. And we invite you now to share your breathing buddies as we settle in and enter a time of prayer, reflection, and meditation. I invite you to find a source of inspiration, maybe to look at somebody else that you see on the screen if you're joining us on Google Meet on Sunday morning, or to look at a source of light, or uh, maybe the person sitting next to you, or just your breathing buddy as we settle in. I invite you, if you're able to, to roll your shoulders back, and to open your chest, to adjust your body in a way that it allows you to be more open, to be freeing of the tensions that came with you as you entered the space this morning. And to take a deep breath in and out. In and out. in and out. One last breath in and out. We enter a time of lament as we say, Spirit of the Phoenix, please remind us to find hope in the ashes. Spirit, you remind us that we can become and overcome the challenges set before us. Spirit of the Phoenix, you also remind us that death is before us. You remind us that we cannot overcome death and remain unchanged. But you remind us that death alters us. I come to you as a leader of this community to ask you to give us, in our grief, to give us hope, to remind us that death is a stage in the cycle of life. It is an opportunity to rise from the ashes into something new, more brilliant and stronger. Spirit of Jesus, I also come to you to this day as well to ask that you give comfort to all those who are suffering from death at the hands of gunmen these past few weeks. From Atlanta to Boulder, to now this week, the city of Orange in California. Give us these communities and all who are affected by these and so many other deaths. Give us all the strength to roll away the stone and to find new life in this time of grief, sorrow, and often despair. Beloved members of this community, I invite you now to speak peace and love into the world by speaking of those who you know are grieving or anyone else you are holding in your heart as we send positive energy out into the world. If you are joining us in Google Meet on Sunday morning, I invite you now to please unmute yourself and speak of or name an intention you hold at this time. If you are joining us in any other format, um, online or during the week, uh, I invite you to enter the name of person that you have an intention for in the comments, so we as a collective may send out goodwill with you. I invite you to do that at this time.
I now bind not only all that has been named and made known to us, but also those which remain unnamed and held in the heart of our community as we light our chalice flame. Our chalice is a symbol that we are connected. We are interconnected and deeply connected to our larger Unitarian Universalist community. And also that this flame is a sign that we are connected to each other in covenant. And we share that covenant as we, share, as we recite these sacred words in this sacred promise. We covenant to be a welcoming and loving community, offering each other fellowship, sanctuary, and a joyful spirit. We seek justice and peace in all our deeds and relationships, and we respect and honor both the individual and the collective search for sacred meaning and truth. We revere and celebrate the diversity of our earth and are guided by the spirit that connects all life as we reach out to offer our best to ourselves, our community, and our world. May the goodwill that we have just offered up be held in our hearts as a sign that we have come to a place to connect us in a way that shares the words of our mouths, the music in our hearts, and our very silent souls as we share these next few moments of silence. You are the new day. You are the new day. I will love you more than me and more than yesterday. If you can but prove to me, you are the new day. Dawn. Let the birds all hail the morning. Love of life will urge me say, you are the new day. When I lay me down at night, knowing we must pay. night might stay yesterday. Thoughts that be as human small, could slow us and end it all. Lie around me where they fall, before the new Philosophy 
just needs days in which to be. Love of life means hope for me. Hi, Prairie. Gather around, littles. I want to talk about this month's theme, which is People of Becoming. And really, I want to think about this weekend being Easter weekend and spring, and we've had this wonderful weather. It's really about renewal and birth. And I want to think about all the gifts you have and you bring since you were born. And as I go through this story, I want you to think about what your favorite gift is that I'm going to list here. And maybe talk to your mom and dad about this. Talk to your grandma, your aunt, your uncle, your best friend. The book is The Twelve Gifts of Birth, and it's by Charlene Costanzo. Once upon a time, a long time ago, when princes and princesses lived in faraway kingdoms, Royal children were given 12 special gifts when they were born. You may have heard of the stories. 12 wise women of the kingdom, or fairy godmothers as they were also called, traveled swiftly to the castle whenever a new prince or princess came into the world. Each fairy godmother pronounced a noble gift upon the royal baby. As time went on, the wise women came to understand that the 12 royal gifts of birth really belonged to every child born anywhere at any time. They yearned to proclaim these gifts to all children, but the customs of the land did not allow that. One day, when the wise women gathered together, they made this prophecy. Some day, all the children of the world will learn the truth about their noble inheritance. And when that happens, a miracle will unfold on the kingdom of earth. Some day is near. Here's the secret they want you to know. At the wondrous moment that you were born, as you took your first breath, a great celebration was held in the, heard in the heavens, and 12 magnificent gifts were granted to you. Gift number one is strength. May you remember to call upon it whenever you need it. Beauty is the second gift. May your deeds reflect its depth. Courage is the third gift. May you speak and act with confidence and use courage to follow your own path. The fourth gift is compassion. May you be gentle with yourself and others. May you forgive those who hurt you and yourself when you make those mistakes. Hope is the fifth gift. Through each passage and season, may you trust the goodness of life. Joy is the sixth gift. May it keep your heart open and filled with light. Talent is the seventh gift. May you discover your own special abilities and contribute them to a better world. The eighth gift is imagination. May it nourish your visions and dreams. The ninth gift is reverence. May you appreciate the wonder that you are and the miracle of all creation. Wisdom is the tenth gift. Guiding your way, wisdom will lead you through knowledge to understanding, and may you hear its soft voice. Love is the eleventh gift. It will grow each time you give it away. And the twelfth gift is faith. May you believe. Now you know about your 12 gifts of birth, but there's more to the secret that the wise women knew. Use your gifts well and you will discover others, among them a gift that is uniquely you. See these noble gifts in other people, share the truth, and be ready for the miracle to unfold as the prophecy of these wise women comes true. Now let's join together in singing our youth out. Go now in peace.
peace go now in peace may the love of god surround you everywhere everywhere you may go go now in peace go now in peace may the love of god surround you everywhere everywhere you may go this morning we will center on these words from pastor nadia bowles weber about our inner demons or the devil that holds us back from being our best selves No matter if you believe the devil is an actual being or the human forces of evil or just the shadow side of our own beings, we all know the voice of the accuser. The voice of shame in our heads, that's the accuser. The accusing voice that tells me that I am what I've done or that who I am is wrong. The accuser is the voice that continually updates me on the current distance between my ideal self and my actual self, between my ideal personality and my actual personality, between my ideal weight, like my driver's license weight, and my actual weight. It makes us go to ridiculous lengths to try to prove it right or to try to prove it wrong. The accuser may try and convict us of the distance between our ideal self and our actual self, but the truth is, no one has ever become their ideal self. It's a moving target, a mirage of water on a desert road. The more we struggle to reach it, the thirstier we become, and yet we come no closer to actual water. And I'm not saying that God will get you to the mirage. What I'm saying is that the self who God loves, the self who God is in a relationship with, is your actual self. God isn't waiting for you to become thinner or heterosexual or married or celibate or more ladylike or less crazy or more spiritual or less of an alcoholic in order to love you. Also, I would argue, since your ideal self doesn't exist, it would follow that the you everyone in your life loves is your actual self too. Please respond in community together. I will not be my own accuser. I will lift my soul. Too often we are our own worst critics. We deny ourselves presence and being in the moment of just being human with all of our failings and frailties. We accuse rather than lift ourselves up. Often, we are asked to give advice to our loved ones. Let it go. Some of us will even add, and let God or the goddess. We offer to our loved ones to let go of the trials before us, but don't give ourselves that grace. May we give ourselves that grace. It is much easier to focus on pain than happiness. Pain does not go away as easily. May we take care to let go of our spiritual pain that holds us back from finding spiritual comfort and joy. Our souls and bodies are fragile things. Sometimes we forget this. We need to take time to care for both of them, for they are good gifts. We are people that are joined together in community, not only to others, but to ourselves. We are joined in community in mind, body, and spirit. May we reflect on how we take care of this community, not accusing or denying but lifting up and celebrating each as bold and beautiful, as souls to be lifted each and every day.
Today we come together to celebrate many traditions of faith, Christian, Jewish, pagan, and more. I would like to share with you my thoughts on all of these traditions um, at this time of year in a more modern and futuristic way. Uh, this way I believe will symbolize and synthesize all of these traditions without too much reference to any of them individually. I would like to celebrate um, all these traditions by sharing with you um, about a day that annually um, holds is held near and dear to my heart. A day that has nothing to do with any of these religious traditions, but also in some ways has everything to do with all of them. The day is First Contact Day, um, which equates to tomorrow, April 5th. So to give you a little context, most of you know that I am a Star Trek fan. Um, within the first month of Denard and I being here in Colorado, some of us attended a theatrical uh, showing of the original Star Trek movie down in Park Meadows. You know, I really miss that. I really miss those dinners and, and dinner and movie with our community. So hopefully we get back to that soon. But anyway, so about first contact day. So I'm going to assume that most of you don't know what that day even is. And even though you should know what that day is, um, I'll tell you about it today. First contact day in Star Trek lore is actually April 5th, 2063. And it's the day that Zephyrin Cochran um, achieved warp speed for the first time um, in his ship, the Phoenix. Uh, the Phoenix was a converted U.S. Air Force nuclear missile. And on this day, uh, Zephyrin Cochran would leave our solar system and then be contacted by the Vulcans uh, back here on Earth that very same night. So, why is this day important to me and so many other Trekkies or Trekkers um, and many others, and how does that relate to today? Well, for most of us, First Contact Day isn't just a day. Instead, it's a hope, a hope for the future. It represents the beginning of a global peace, a time when humanity will rise from the ashes of a eugenics war that nearly decimated humanity and the planet. A war reflective of Unitarian adjacent Gene Roddenberry's view of World War II, uh, Hitler's and the Nazis' rise in Germany, and their aim to develop a superior race. And also the current state of racism in the 1960s, the United States, and around the world. Roddenberry saw oppression of marginalized peoples, and specifically xenophobia and racism, as the worst threat that could possibly be against humanity. Um, he thought that there was nothing that existed that was worse. He felt that if at the end of the day there was going to be annihilation of our planet or our, uh, our humanity itself, it would come from these two things. So he aimed to change the trajectory of racism in the United States by introducing the world to a multiracial cast in the 1960s Star Trek um, with leadership that represented various cultures, races, and ethnicities. He did this with the help of his friends Lucille Ball, Desi Arnaz, and Unitarian Rod Serling. He saw a world that would bring itself to the brink of extinction in the early 2050s after a 30-year war that would begin, in his conception, just five years from now in 2026 and would last until 2053. First Contact Day would be a, a symbol would symbolize the rise of humanity from the ashes of this third world war with literally a converted u.s nuclear missile into a spaceship that he renamed that would be renamed the phoenix i think this is an important day not because it is a real day set in the mytholo mythological future but because it is a day that whether you enjoy science fiction or not, even if you sacrilegiously disavow the truth of Star Trek, the shame that you should hold, 
I offer to you First Contact Day as a day of hope, a day that helps us envision that world that works towards justice for all people. In the 1960s, Gene Roddenberry took us on an adventure that sought to defeat racism. In the 1980s, we saw a world that promoted our environmental justice, challenging our current models of care of, or lack thereof, of our animal world, and how misusing technology could cause great harm to our planet. In the 1990s, we saw a world where all sexual orientations are accepted and gender roles are challenged. We also saw the end of capitalism and a futuristic world where the Cold War ended and longtime enemies could join together for the betterment of all. And now in the, 19, in the 2020s, <laughs> we are seeing a future where all genders are celebrated and honored. First contact is a hope for liberation and a world of possibilities where justice prevails. A world where the moral arc of the universe is long, but we can imagine how it will bend toward justice. I believe that this is the same world, though in a different time in history, a worldview that may be different is still the same hope for a world that both Jesus and Moses possessed. A world where liberation succeeds and the oppressed rise from the ashes of their oppression. A world where the Passover provides the freedom of slaves in Egypt, and Easter liberates the immigrant and non-citizen from Rome, and the Jew from both rigid and oppressive Jewish law of the time. In each of these cases, there is a hope for liberation of the oppressed. There is a hope for the oppressed to be liberated from their oppression. And in the words of Mr., not Dr., but Mr. Spock, there is a hope for the oppressed to rise and to live long and prosper. You see, for me, Easter is not about the life of one man ending and being risen from the dead, nor is Passover the celebration or recognition of the death of Egyptian children. But instead, they are metaphors for liberation that brings transformation from pain and suffering and, yes, even death. A transformation that leaves one man or a collective dead, and out of that death can rise a nation and a movement that offers hope to the poor and the marginalized. I see this in the lives that we have seen lost over these last few years. In the lives of Breonna Taylor, Elijah McClain, George Floyd, as well as those murdered in Atlanta, in Boulder, in Orange. These are the lives that we have lost among the millions around the world that have been lost to COVID-19 and other forms of senseless, neglect of our poor and our marginalized by greed and capitalism, xenophobia, nationalism, endless wars, and more. Today I offer you First Contact Day as a day of hope to rise from the ashes, just as that day was in Egypt when all those lives lost gave liberation to a new generation. And in Jerusalem, when the crucifixion of a man gave birth to a movement that looked to build a beloved community of equality and justice. I offer you this first contact day as a day of remembrance, a day of hope for the future, a day when we see justice for our environment, an end to capitalism in its current form, and equality and equity for our poor, our marginalized, and the most abused of society. I hope that we see this Passover and Easter as days of hope for the future, 
when we can have not only sorrow and grief for those we have lost, but also hope that their ashes, from their ashes, we will be able to rise, to not let them be forgotten. I hope that with these days, we will be able to have faith of the heart and soul of humanity, to change and transform humanity, not only by looking back to what we have been, but also by being like the phoenix and looking forward to what we can aspire and transform ourselves to be. 63 years ago, on March 26, 1958, the White House published a pamphlet named Introduction to Outer Space. And in it, it read, and I quote, The first of these factors is a compelling, urgent urge of men to explore and to discover the thrust of curiosity that leads men to try to go where no one has gone before. Most of the surface of the earth has now been explored, and men now turn to exploration of outer space as their next objective. These words were written to encourage us as a people to look past what is in front of us directly and to dream of our future one that we could never have imagined in the past, but a future that is transformative and filled with a vision of hope. These words later became the foundation of the theme of Star Trek and the mission of the Enterprise to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. And I see that as an invitation to boldly go where no one has gone before. So as we encourage and seek out the world before us and the future before us, we may hopefully go where no one has gone before. I invite us to make every Passover and Easter first contact days, days where we move forward with great and wondrous hope to boldly go where we have never gone before, and to wish upon all of creation long life and prosperity. To you all, I say, in this very moment, on this Easter Sunday, on this last day of, of Passover, on these first days of spring, I say to you, Live long and prosper. Blessed be. It's been a long road Getting from there to here It's been a long time But my time is finally near And I can feel a change in the way right now Nothing's in my way
Good morning, Prairie. Happy, beautiful Easter day. I hope you like the weather. I ordered it. I called Mother Nature and said, could you please? And she sure delivered. But no, gratitude is something that I've come to really, really, really appreciate, especially in these last hmm, months, years. And one of the things that helps me collect my gratitude, it's, it's an app. It's simply, it's on my phone. And I'm able to, at the end of the day, just quickly put down three things that I've been grateful for. Some days I can't think of anything, so I, I sit there trying to come up with something. So a week ago I was stumped and I remembered that I had tried to make greens, good greens, and I did. So that was one thing I was grateful for. Something that Prairie makes me super grateful for is our lifespan team. When I go to church wool every Sunday, I am just awestruck. The programming and the quality of people that are just putting themselves out there with love and such warmth towards our kids, our middle-aged and our and our older youngsters. So just to mention a few names, I wanna thank Jen, who is the captain of our Prairie SS lifespan. She keeps us chugging on those waters of life. Sometimes those waters get a little bit, woo, woo, yes, and she keeps us going. Kendra, she brings us such great creativity and organization, and she brings us Adley. I mean, really, that's all she would need to bring. We love Adley. Susan, Susan is just the cat's meow. I love it when she reads a story to us and I just don't wanna stop listening. I wanna just hear stories all day. Molly too, with her teenage wisdom. I love hearing her philosophies and her, her little additions of, of storytelling. And then we've got Joe and Melissa, who not only at camp, but anytime you run into them, well, we'll say virtually these days, they are just so much fun. And you can just tell how deeply they connect with our youth. And Janet, Janet, who is our lifespan for the adults, the youngsters who have a few more years on them than, than Adley. And, and last but not least, certainly not least, is Denard and me. We get to create fun activities for the summer. Yep, we're dealing with, you know, we've got, we've got the COVID regulations, but we are so hyped. We are gonna have a super hero, super summer. And Denard with his many, many, many years of youth ministry experience. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna learn so much. Hold on. Got my hat and my SPF 5000, it should do me good today. You know, if I had had lifespan growing up, do you just, Oh my gosh, that would have been amazing. But no, I didn't. Growing up in Utah, I, I, I really didn't have church I could go to and, and a lifespan team cheering me on. Okay, so my lifespan, this, this was my lifespan in just a minute or two. Here's me, mm-hmm. And wow, I was just about to get my Easter basket. I sure could have used Healthy Living Group. Mm hmm And here's me. Mm hmm Here I am. Enjoying things, but probably thinking, ooh, after this, I'd love to get together with the youth and go to Brunch Bunch. Mm hmm Here. 
Here I am. Oop, there I am. A brownie. Yep, thinking, gosh, I wish there were some youth activities that I could do, coordinate with maybe a lifespan um, social justice type activity. We're going back. Not sure what I'm thinking there. But then here I'm thinking, oh, I'm just lost somewhere in Utah. Snowbird. But I need some religious education. Yep. Uh huh. Oh, and there, oh, that's my puppy Brogan. <clears throat> Probably thinking, whoa, it would be so nice to go to movie night tonight and we could watch some, some of those good dog movies. <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh, oh boy, yep. That was high school. I probably needed, really needed the owl program then. Yep. Okay, let's go back to this one. Here I am, here I am. I think I was in California, <clears throat> those Pacific Ocean waters, thinking, oh, I really want a nice summer program for the youth. Something like that. Here's me. This wasn't too long ago. This was maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm probably the no, I don't know what I'm thinking, but I probably need therapy. Yeah. And, and look at me now. Look at me now. Okay. Yeah, this is me now. I really could have benefited from a really good lifespan program as a youth. When you give to the plate today, your love goes to the Duke Scholarship and Youth Activities Fund. We invite you to be a happy giver to Prairie UU, and I'd like to thank you for offering to our community. We knew Sorry, we know it is given thoughtfully and we receive it thankfully. Puppy dog eyes. Give good puppy dog eyes. Come on. Puppy dog. Please. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> From you I receive, to you I give, together we share and from this we live. From you I receive to you I give together we share and from this we live Good morning Prairie UU it's that time of year that we kick off our annual stewardship drive to ensure that Prairie will have the funds to continue to be a positive force in our lives and in our community. Our goal this year is approximately 106,000. We have some generous members who will give a match for every dollar that you increase your pledge over last year. The drive started April 1 with our leadership starting to pledge. Please check your email for a link about our goals and how to pledge, or you can go directly to our website. You can pledge online, or if you want to pledge by phone, you can email me at janetss at prairieuu.org. The drive will end April 23rd. And we hope that everyone will have pledged at that time so that that money can go into our budget planning process for next fiscal year. Whatever you can give, we appreciate. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Clark Huff, the immediate past president of the Prairie Board and currently the treasurer at Prairie and the uh, chair of the finance committee. <clears throat> This morning, I want to do two things. First, to share with you some of the thoughts I have about what Prairie means to me. And second, to encourage you to generously support our stewardship drive, which is beginning now and will extend for the next three weeks. Let me start by repeating what has been said very well by others. We are Prairie. Prairie is our extended family and our beloved community. Today, 
I want to mention a few specific things that maybe other people do not mention about uh, why I value Prairie. First, I love the tagline, a liberal religious light on the prairie. These are the words that first made me think that I belonged here. I love the fact that others at Prairie, including our former minister, came from super conservative Protestant Christian backgrounds, similar to mine. I felt an immediate kinship. I love the fact that at Prairie, I can be open, vulnerable, and non-pretentious. Being part of Prairie has grounded me. I love feeling that I am part of a long line of heretics and dissenters, people who are a bit out of step, and non-subscribers to group think. I, I believe in the principles and the covenant uh, of Prairie, and I do not believe in dogma. I love being part of a religious community where women provide much of the leadership and nurturing. <clears throat> I must admit, women are simply better at resonating with others than most men. I love the emphasis on how we live our lives and treat one another and the commitment to justice. People at Prairie are generous with love and with forgiveness. Finally, I love the music in this church and am overwhelmed by the musical talent and voices. Singing together is the ultimate bonding activity. I could go on. There is so much about Prairie that I value. The bottom line is that Prairie has made me a better person. I hope that you too cherish what Prairie brings into your lives. Today, I am asking you to be generous in your support with your pledges. The harsh reality is that Prairie survival depends on your financial support. We cannot function without a place to meet or a virtual home, a minister, and a staff to help with religious education, music, and administrative tasks. <clears throat> This last year has been exceedingly difficult for in many ways. Some of us have experienced unprecedented financial problems. For those of us capable of doing so, please consider increasing your pledge. All increases in pledges will be matched dollar for dollar with matching funds contributed by several Prairie members. We are all bombarded by requests for contributions to worthy causes. But we must assign priorities and must support what is most important to us. For me, Prairie is important and very personal. I urge you to share in supporting our Prairie family during this pledge drive. Remember, you and I, we are Prairie. Thank you. As we prepare to leave this sacred day amongst all of these sacred traditions and holy days that we are about to engage from Holy and Passover to Easter to in the next uh, week or so, Ramadan, may we hold all of these traditions in our heart with hope as we remember that this does not end our service in this moment may end our time together in this moment, but it is a symbol that we will go forward and engage the world with hope, with love, and joy as we recite these words from Mark L. Bellatini. Go in peace. Live simply, gently, at home in yourselves. Act, Act justly, justly. Speak justly. justly. Remember the depth of your own compassion. Forget not your power in the days of your powerlessness. Do, Do not, not desire to be wealthier than your peers, and stint not your hand, hand of charity. Practice, practice forbearance. forbearance. Speak the truth, or speak not. 
take care of yourselves as bodies, for you are a good gift. Crave peace for all people in the world, beginning with yourselves, and go as you go with the dream of that peace alive in your heart. Amen. Amin. Shalom. Salam. Namaste. Blessed be. Thank you for joining us this morning in our service. Uh, I also want to invite you to join us if you um, are joining us on Sunday morning um, after service in Google Meet. You can go to our Prayer UU calendar to get the link. Um, we'll be having a town hall meeting uh, to discuss some things that are going on in our congregation um, immediately after the service. And also I want to invite you uh, next week for our Sunday morning, which will uh, be entitled the unity of God and we will be looking at the celebration of Ramadan and how uh, we can uh, join in that celebration with our uh, Muslim siblings around the world. So have a wonderful week and take care of yourself and remember that you are a good gift.